Many sad stories of suicides into Newtown Creek exist in the papers, and while most of the names disappear from newspaper history at one notice, sometimes a more full history can be found. Wednesday, January 19, 1859, the Brooklyn Times Union. Yesterday afternoon, a butcher named Joseph Clark discovered the body of a female in Newtown Creek, 17th Ward. The body was conveyed to the 5th Precinct Station House, where it was resuscitated after some difficulty. The woman says her name is Margaret Conlin, that she has a husband at Winfield, Long Island, who ill-treats her, and that she has determined to destroy herself. Every attention has been bestowed upon her, and she will undoubtedly recover. Friday, January 21, 1859, the New York Daily Herald. Attempt at Suicide Tuesday afternoon, Mr. Joseph Clark, a butcher, while passing along the road near Townsend's bathhouse in the 17th Ward, discovered the body of a female in Newtown Creek. With the assistance of some of the neighbors, he got it out, and placing it in his cart, took it to the station house of the 5th Precinct. The woman was entirely insensible from cold and exposure, but by the aid of restoratives applied by Captain Wogelham and the men in the station house, she recovered so as to be able to give some account of herself. She says her name is Margaret Conlin, that she has a husband residing in Winfield, Long Island, and that she meant to destroy herself. She assigned as a cause for the rash act that her husband ill-treats her and abuses her. Every attention was given her by the officers of the station house, and she will probably recover. Had she not been discovered as she was, she would undoubtedly have died in a short time, as she was almost covered with ice when found. Several other articles appear about Margaret Conlin's suicide attempt in Newtown Creek, but none offer anything new. A Margaret Conlin shows up in the record again in August 1863 as the witness to the murder of her brother John Conlin. John had met up with some fellow sailors on shore leave after he had had some drinks at a place known as Edward Roddy's Porter House. The Brooklyn Daily Eagle reports on August 10. Tom McCune, it appears, had deserted from the U.S. gunboat Connecticut lying in at the Navy Yard but an hour before. He came ashore with two shipmates in the officer's boat, which they had stolen from the vessel. On landing, they took several drinks and met Conlin in Hudson Avenue and walked with him to Prospect Street when a dispute arose between them about drinking together. Some hard words were exchanged, and as alleged, Conlin struck him with a knife, whereupon McCune drew his sailor's dirk knife from its sheath and struck him in self-defense. The knife with which the deed was done was found in the privy of 165 Proxbeck Street. The blade was covered with blood. The accused is about 19 years old and the deceased was in the 24th year of his age. Margaret testified to what she saw. She was standing at the store door of Roddy, corner of Green Lane and Prospect Street, on Saturday evening talking with my brother. Mary Ann Enright was with me. A sailor named McCune came up and invited my brother to go as far as his sister's basement door. They walked off together this door is only two doors from the place where we were standing. When they got as far as the door, they commenced quarreling. The sailor struck my brother first. When my brother ran away from him, the sailor following him. The sailor closed with him and threw him down, and I saw him strike my brother in the left side with a knife he held in his hand. He cried out, Oh, Jesus Christ, and then ran off and entered his sister's basement. My brother died right off. I identify the prisoner McCune as the man I saw strike my brother. 
After the murder was committed, McCune is supposed to have shouted, Oh Jesus, I have done it, before running off to his sister's house nearby, where he was arrested. Enoch Jacob, captain of the 42nd Precinct, testified as to what McCune had told police at his interrogation. McCune stated that he met Conlin, and Conlin proposed that he should go to Tom's sister's house, speaking of it as a house of ill fame, and stay all night with the girls, meaning two girls named Meg Middleton and Holy Joe, the latter being McCune's sister. They then fought. McCune was found guilty in August 1863 and imprisoned until his sentencing in March 1864. At sentencing, McCune pled for his life again claiming that Conlin had called his sister a prostitute, but the court was not moved and sentenced him to hang on May 20.